Matt Reif has always had a love for science. Growing up on a small farm in Oklahoma and the daughter of two medical doctors, she had a natural curiosity for how things worked. It wasn't long before she had a desire to explore new worlds. My Brownie Scout troop had a father-daughter astronomy class at the Oklahoma City Planetarium. And so went to the planetarium, learned about the stars, the constellations, the planets, and, and I was hooked. It was during her college years that Pat was captivated by the U.S. space program. Oh, here's we've had a problem. We well, had a pretty large bang. Okay. Here came Apollo 13 and the explosion that was life-threatening and they had to use duct tape and dryer hose to, to save their lives. And to me, that said, that called to me. After graduating with her PhD at Rice University in astrophysics, Pat began her research in space plasma physics, analyzing data from various unmanned spacecraft it was her work with the Dynamics Explorer mission that led to an exciting discovery about the Northern Lights. We flew a spacecraft, one spacecraft that was below and one spacecraft that was above. And we could see the electrons coming down and being accelerated by an electric field to hit the atmosphere. And at the same time, ions from the atmosphere being accelerated by that same electric field upwards. And so by having two spacecraft at two different altitudes, we could really understand for the very first time what caused the aurora. And that was probably the, one of the highlights of my career. This is Pat Rod. A professor of physics and astronomy and the director of the Rice University Space Institute. Part of Pat's research involves the study of space weather. Occasionally, the sun, when it has a giant solar flare, will send out a coronal mass ejection, which is a mountain full of plasma. And when it hits this magnetic field, it transfers particles and energy into the Earth's environment and can cause uh, failures of spacecraft. It can cause energetic particles for cross-polar flying aircraft. It can cause uh, auroral blackouts like the one in Canada in 1989. What we try to do is to understand and to be able to predict uh, geomagnetic storms one to six hours ahead. And so we can send out warnings. This spacecraft is called the Image spacecraft. It was Another key part of Pat's work involves portable planetariums in partnership with the Houston Museum of Natural Science and the Rice Space Institute. Pat's team travels all over the world visiting schools to present a program called Space Update. So here's the Earth with a magnetic field model. They look kind of like spaghetti strings. And so what you're doing is you're bringing modern experiences that kids around the globe have to a place where they don't have them. And if all it takes is an inflatable ball with a projector inside, that's nothing for them to see a whole different view of the universe. I love to get science to the people. And that's the other half of my career, is creating ways to excite kids about science. And I do this both by creating materials for the kids themselves and also by teaching teachers. So I'm so excited about coming to Canada. For Dr. Your... Reif was my mentor and my advisor for the program, not just my professor. And I came to find out that she is a Christian. And in that capacity, because I was struggling in my life in the direction I wanted to take, she really stepped in and the Lord used her in that way to guide me to become a teacher, a science teacher, and help me in my personal life as well to where she totally changed my life. Um, I'm going to cry now because <laughs> she has meant so much to me and I'm so thankful to the Lord for bringing her in my life. Pat's positive influence on people stems from her Christian upbringing. Faith was really part of my life from, from day one. My parents were always strong Christians and, and more importantly, they acted the, the way. While in graduate school, Pat met her husband. Married now for more than 37 years, it was only a few years ago that Tom suffered a near-fatal brain aneurysm. 
While we were in the ambulance, he went into convulsions and he was uh, shaking all over. And I laid hands on him and played the blood of Jesus over him. And he just relaxed. And I think that was a big turning point. He was in the hospital for over three weeks. But uh, praise God, he came out perfectly. And he's still doing theoretical astrophysics now, which is fabulous. I think the strength of our relationship is mutual respect. And we don't always agree on everything. Uh, he's a theorist. I'm an experimentalist. I'm a Christian. He's not. I, and yet, we respect what each other believes. We respect what each other cherishes. We work together. With three grown children, Pat loves her family time on her ranch. I love my family. I love playing with them. I love teaching them. I love building chicken coops with them. <laughs> uh, and the other thing is just being outdoors. Take off the electronic leash and, and just sit down by the pond and watch the birds land. She is a very open-minded person. She's put up with a lot from her three very impertinent <laughs> children. So she still loves us completely. She is totally tolerant of the fact that we believe differently than she does. And she just, uh, she just loves us no matter what. Pat's local church community has been a huge source of inspiration. I go to the church in the, in the morning on Sundays. I teach a Sunday school. I lead the congregational singing and, and then come back Sunday afternoon and I do manual labor all, all Sunday afternoon. And, and that, that really gives me that refreshing that I need to, to face the rest of the day. Not only has Pat's faith in God given her inspiration, it has also encouraged others. Not for life as somebody who can uh, wear different hats and still be the same person. Um, that's just the genius of her. I mean, she can talk to you, me, to a different kindergarten kid, to a different faculty member, and still act the same way. And I think she leaves individuals with a feeling of life is bigger than you can make it by yourself. And life can be more important. And she doesn't do it by forcing it on you. She doesn't preach. She simply just does. And so you're with her and you just do too. I mean, her positive nature, her compassion, her generosity has touched my life personally. And then I strive to be a teacher like her, enthusiastic. And I love science. And so I try to share that with the children just like she shared with us as, as teachers. There is a lot of mystery still out there, and that's what makes science fun, and that's what really makes a true scientist tick. You want to find out what the world is like, and to me, uncovering the world is uncovering the handiwork of God.